Hello, thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Successful Summer Camps, with Mr. Adam Parman, a Maya Elite Consultant. I would like to thank everyone for taking some time today to join us. Uh, Mr. Parman has prepared a really great webinar here uh, to help everyone with their uh, summers. Uh, Mr. Parman, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to speak to everybody on today's webinar topic on how to have a successful summer camp. Let me first start off by saying that if you're considering or you're deciding on summer camp still, it simply may be a little too late. Um, it's imperative that if you're still making the decision whether you want to offer summer camp uh, this upcoming summer, that you act immediately to have a good result from your effort and your hard work. To start today off, we want to first start talking about the reasons why you should consider um, hosting uh, summer camp. The first reason is simply for new members. Summer camp can be a great way to attract new members into your evening martial arts program. With a strong marketing plan, summer camp can be an effective prospect marketing tool that owners often don't consider when thinking about summer camp. Our second reason why to host uh, summer camp is simply retention. Summer camps can provide a wonderful opportunity for your existing students to meet new friends, develop special bond with staff and instructors, and simply have fun, get renewed in their, um, their excitement for um, your martial arts program and uh, for martial arts in general. The third reason why you should consider uh, hosting summer camp is if you have an existing after-school program. Um, if you have an existing after-school program, summer camps can provide additional services for those families so they're not forced to look for services elsewhere. This keeps those families from attending daycare um, and eliminates the potential of them not returning to your after-school program the following school year. Our fourth reason is retail and equipment sales. Summer camps can help generate revenue by providing opportunities for you to charge for things like summer camp t-shirts, weapons for theme-based camps, and other such equipment. And finally, uh, our last point uh, and why uh, you should consider doing summer camps is simply revenue. Now, if you're already hitting your financial goals for your summer um, without having to offer summer camp, then you may not want to offer summer camp unless you have several layers of additional staff. However, if you're not reaching your goals or you're not hitting your goals, a well-planned summer camp can be extremely profitable. For example, if there's only uh, if you have 25 children averaging per week or per session of summer camp at an average of $135 a week, that's going to generate you $3,375 per week of camp being offered. And if you do that four weeks, out of the month, that's going to be $13,500 per month of potential summer camp revenue that you could be generating uh, by offering such a program. So it's certainly something uh, to consider when thinking about the revenue and your financial goals that you've set for your school. Now the second thing that we want to think about um, when thinking about camps is going to be um, the types of camps. Uh, that you can offer. There are several different types. The first one we want to discuss today is our half-day camps. Half-day camps are typically four hours in length, and they typically start early morning and go to uh, early afternoon. Camps like these um, typically last somewhere between from 8 a.m. until about noon. If you start early enough, you can still have time to rest before your evening classes. This will also allow you to have plenty of time to work in the office or take care of any business that you need before starting your regular, uh, regularly, uh, regular class schedule in the evening. The second type of camp is going to be your full day camps. Full day camps typically last um, eight hours or more, and they're the length of a normal working day. These camps are used to accommodate the average working parent and are used as a great alternative to daycare. The average working parent will need to be able to have time to drop off and pick up according to their work schedule, meaning that most full-day camps and campers will need 
services from somewhere between 7 to 7.30 a.m. and go to 5.30 or uh, 6 p.m. in the evening. Now, during a full day camp, you're going to need to spread out the martial arts training throughout the day as not to burn out the campers. We try to incorporate lots of martial arts games, arts and crafts, team building exercise, life lessons, martial arts classes, and theme-based material to make the day pass quickly. The key with hosting full day camps is to make sure that you have plenty of curriculum to fill the day. And I often suggest having more in case um, your curriculum runs short or uh, you go through an activity faster than you planned. The third type of camp to consider are what we call mini camps. Now these camps are uh, typically scheduled one or two weeks out of each month. It's very common in other sports like baseball or basketball, tennis and soccer. These camps may be offered with a specific theme or topic for each week or for each day. If you're not already scheduled um, uh, for to host summer camp, this is going to be the easiest way to test it out rather than planning to host a summer camp all day, every day of the summer. Keep in mind that most school owners will do a combination of the three main types of camps we've just discussed. The next thing that we want to talk about is the daily camp schedule. Um, after deciding the type of camp you want to host, the next decision is your schedule. When making your daily schedule, make sure to include downtime for campers and instructors, but keep the day packed with activities. In teaching, we call this pacing and peaking, meaning that um, rigorous uh, activities, such as martial arts classes or game time, should be followed with less physical demanding activities, such as arts and crafts, life lessons, etc. We like to start each day with what we call small group activities that encourage campers to get to know each other and develop friendship. Some great resources for uh, get to know you activities and camp games include um, icebreakers.ws and ultimatecampresource.com. There's great activities and, and great suggestions to incorporate in your daily camp schedule. Make sure to post your camp schedule every day to show parents the structure of camp. This shows value in your program while showing that you're not just offering daycare. And also, it helps to hold the staff accountable for uh, completing the planned activities for each day's camp. A suggested daily camp schedule for a full-time camp might possibly be um, as follows. And this is our uh, curriculum for one of our camp themes. Uh, we're doing uh, Lego Ninjago Week. So we're going to be starting off from 7.30 until 9 a.m. We have our early drop-off. So there's no planned activities. This is going to be time that they can um, chill out, um, eat a morning snack. Um, if they brought it, uh, finish breakfast that mom and dad picked up on the way uh, to the martial arts school. Um, watch a movie, play um, handhold video games. Starting at 9 a.m. is when our planned activities start, and from 9 to 9.30, we're going to have our Get to Know You activity. From 9.30 until 10, we're going to do games. Uh, we have two popular games, like uh, we call it Ninja Time and Master Says, that the kids love to play. From 10 a.m. to 10.20, we're going to do a morning snack. And uh, we're going to do our life lesson. For each of our sessions, for each week that we offer camp, we have a different life lesson. And within that, then we, have, uh, we break it down uh, for a daily life lesson chat, uh, just like you would do your evening math chats uh, with your evening students. And in this case, this particular week, we're working on personal discipline. From 10.20 to 11, then we have our arts and crafts time. We're going to be working on paper lanterns uh, in this example. From 11 to 12.15, we're going to do our themed martial arts training. So we're going to do martial arts training relating to whatever our uh, theme is for that week. In this case, it's an Ninjago, so uh, 
We're going to be doing ninja obstacle course and doing sword training. Then we're going to break for lunch. So at this point, if you offer a half-day camp as an option, then uh, once we go to our lunch time, this is going to be time that the parents should be picking up students uh, that are only participating half day, and then your full day campers will continue to go through the activities. We're going to do lunch and a movie, uh, lasting about 45 minutes. I don't suggest uh, that take up any more of that time. That'll just be downtime for kids uh, to play around and quote unquote get bored. And then from 1 to 2.15, we're going to have a regular martial arts class. And in this class, we're going to incorporate our evening curriculum. So if you have any existing students that come to your evening programs that are attending a karate camp, then they're going to get that evening curriculum in. So that way, they don't have to be there an entire day of camp and come back uh, for evening classes in order to uh, progress through their uh, designated rank material or curriculum. Notice uh, that we only offer the martial arts classes uh, and the evening curriculum for full day campers. So our half day, they were only there for eight hours. I would still expect them to come back uh, to our later evening classes if they're an existing student to get in their curriculum. Uh, but for our full day, we ensure that they've already received that evening curriculum so they don't have to return later that evening. Because um, uh, if they're going to be there all day and then return for evening classes, that just presents a problem for burnout, especially if they're doing multiple weeks. Then we're going to go to our second craft uh, from 2.45 until 3.45. We're going to go back to our theme training in this case. For this particular theme, Ninjago Week, we're going to do our suction cup throwing stars. And then at 3.45, we go to our daily rewards. We give out daily rewards to students um, in the form of a certificate. And we also have like a prize bucket that we allow them to pick from uh, if they want a reward. We give out rewards for uh, students that uh, were the most respectful, um, showed uh, the most amount of leadership during the day, um, acted like a black belt. We call it the black belt of the day award, things like that. And over the course of a week, we want to ensure that each student gets a reward um, uh, throughout the week. So they may. Not every student's going to get a reward every day, but every student will get a reward by the end of the week. And then from 4 to 5.30, we're going to have our late pickup. Again, we're going to go back to movies. They can pull out um, the uh, handhold video games, or um, we have a whole lot of uh, things uh, like games and things like that that they can do until mom and dad get there to pick them up. The next thing that um, you need to consider is your themes, your summer camp themes. So as a result of your summer camp themes, um, these are a six, um, essential part of the success of any camp. Um, as a result, it's important to make sure that your themes appeal to your prospective campers. If your goal is to attract a lot of potential non-students with your camps, don't pick themes that are only going to appeal to existing martial artists, such as sparring camp, catch-up camp, weapons camp. Keep in mind that most non-martial artists are not going to know what a comma or a bow staff is. And these themes typically tend to raise more concerns for parents um, than, than they add value to your program. This doesn't mean that you can't incorporate weapons or sparring into your theme. It just means that you shouldn't make it your main theme if your goal is to attract non-students. Now, likewise, if your goal from your camps is just for your existing uh, martial arts students, then by all means uh, would you want to have your themes such as uh, comma or bow or sword week, um, things like that. I suggest using themes that are going to get children excited about coming to your camp. We create our themes based on things like TV shows, toys, video games, popular cell phone apps, and uh, popular movies. Some of our most popular themes for this upcoming year include Angry Birds, uh, Jedi Training, uh, Ninjago Week, and Skylanders Ninja Adventures. Keep in mind that with a little imagination, any theme can be martial arts related. Now, 
Our next thing that we want to talk about when considering summer camp is uh, your student to instructor ratio. Depending on the age of the children, uh, you're going to want uh, to uh, have adequate supervision for all of your campers. Typically, we like to have at least one instructor for every 12 to 14 children with a teenage assistant. It's better to have too many instructors um, uh, than needed rather than not having enough. We encourage our advanced rate students from our teen classes to help and volunteer as quote unquote camp counselors. These teens receive leadership credit for our instructor training program and we also give them $75 in karate cash that they can spend at the school on anything they like, like towards testing, uh, graduations, uh, equipment, things like that. The one thing they can't spend it on is they can't apply that towards tuition. We use camp as a perfect opportunity for leadership and instructor training as inspiring young instructors get experience teaching classes under the watchful eye of a certified instructor. Without, uh, without being under the scrutiny of parents from the sidelines. I suggest only accepting children into your camp that are between the ages of 5 to 12 years old. This is going to eliminate any problems with potty training while keeping you uh, from having to deal with any teenage issues like um, attitudes and, um, and certain topics. The next thing to consider is whether you're going to be offering uh, field trips. So with field trips, um, they're always optional, but they can be extremely fun. Although they may require some additional staffing and pose transportation challenges. A field trip doesn't have to last the whole day, and in fact in many cases it can only uh, last for a couple of hours. For all day field trips, we allow parents to accompany children which can also eliminate the need for additional staffing. Keep in mind, when you're offering an off-site field trip, you're opening yourself up for much, much greater liability. As a result, make sure that you never allow children to be transported by a personal vehicle and that you have the proper insurance on the vehicles transporting children with a minimum liability coverage of $3 million or more. If you are unable to offer off-site field trips, consider offering special plan activities once per week that can take the place of a field trip but be just as exciting. I suggest having um, an inflatables day, um, have a, a company come in and deliver uh, a bounce house or an inflatable slide and let the kids play outside on that. Scheduling uh, to have a video game truck show up at your facility and for the kids uh, to play on the game trucks, a portable uh, rock wall, or even plan on having a giant water gun battle at the end of a week. That can be just as exciting um, and serve um, as a perfect alternative than having um, to leave your facility. The next thing to consider is extended care. With extended care, uh, you may uh, consider um, offering uh, care for early drop-off and late pickup, especially if you're only offering half-day camps or you have parents using your camps as an alternative to daycare. Extended care is not included in the daily camp fee, but can be offered as an additional service. Keep in mind, in some states, you are not allowed to charge extra for early drop-off or uh, late pickup unless you're a licensed daycare provider. As a result, it's important to check with your local laws and stay in compliance. For some parents, this additional service may make the difference between attending camp or attending an, um, somebody else's camp. Uh, for our particular schools, we offer uh, early uh, drop-off and late pickup at no additional charge. So that way uh, we stay in compliance with our state, but also uh, so that we uh, provide that additional service for the parents who need it. The next thing when planning for your summer camps is going to be your pricing. With your pricing, I suggest 
um, calling around to some of the camps. So that way you can get a good feel on the going rate for a week-long uh, summer camp program. In most areas, you're going to find that a weekly rate uh, for camp is going to be somewhere between $145 a week to $185 per week, but that's going to depend on the part of the country that you live in. Some areas is going to be much higher, and some areas is going to be a little bit lower uh, than that price range. Start with your daily rate, and then just work your way from there. We give a 10% discount for additional family members, and we give an additional 10% discount if anyone signs up for multiple weeks. If you're going to offer field trips, I suggest having a separate charge for field trips. So that way, the expense from offering that service does not take away from your existing profit margin. Our field trip charge typically ranges somewhere between $8 to $14 per session or per week, depending on the destination and the expense and staffing to get there. That brings us to our next topic to consider when thinking about summer camp and having a successful summer camp, and that's going to be your staffing. When having any type of camp, you must have at least one adult supervisor over the age of 21 present at all times. Camp counselors need not to be necessarily black belts, but they must be able to lead small groups and show a high level of responsibility. Background checks are highly suggested for all staff members, and all staff should be a CPR and first aid certified. When possible, try to have separate staff running your summer camps than the staff who are responsible for your evening martial arts classes. This pre uh, prevents your staff from burning out, and it also keeps everyone at their best to service customers and provide a superior evening classes. If you are offering uh, summer camp all summer long, I suggest uh, taking at least one week off from your summer camp. Um, and we typically make that our July 4th um, week. So that way um, our staff have time to rest. But then, of course, we can attend the Super Show as well. The last thing uh, that you need to consider when um, planning for your summer camp and hosting summer camps is uh, all the legal stuff. And keep in mind, I'm no expert when it comes to uh, the legal side. Every state has separate guidelines and regulations for summer camp. Nobody can know all the regulations and guidelines for each and every state. As a result, I highly suggest that you find out what your state regulations are and you do your best to comply. Many states have exemptions that allow quote-unquote single sport activities to offer full-day camps throughout the summer. However, just because you're following those regulations does not mean that you're exempt from having a daycare license without first filing the proper pa uh, paperwork with the state. If you don't know what your state exemptions are, I suggest uh, you do an internet search for uh, summer camp exi uh, exemptions for your state to see what paperwork is required for you to operate a summer camp in your area. Often that process um, will take several weeks, four to six weeks, uh, before you actually have um, a paper in your hand uh, with your exemption. And when filing that paperwork, make sure that you uh, have talked to an expert, uh, somebody who has already gotten an exemption from the state to make sure you know uh, what wording to have and not have in that paperwork. Once you're denied, it's going to be very hard to go back and uh, refile and, uh, and get that exemption a second time around. Now, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me. My email is aparman, that's P-A-R-M-A-N at masuccess.com. And I'll also be speaking on this topic at the 2013 Super Show in Las Vegas. And I look forward to seeing everybody there um, at, uh, at our uh, uh, summer camp. Um, uh, when I talk um, at the Super Show, I'll also be giving out um, examples of uh, our summer camp brochures 
and um, and also our uh, week uh, weekly curriculum for anybody um, to have as well. So that way you can uh, better plan future. And we'll be um, covering topics such as marketing and things like that, how to market your summer camp. So please come out and, uh, and see me at the Super Show. I would love to meet everybody. Thank you, Mr. Parman. And I'd like to remind everyone we will be taking questions uh, at, during this webinar as well. If you've had any questions during the course of the event, uh, please enter those into the questions panel in the GoToWebinar uh, pane that should be open on your screen. I, I see a number of questions have already come in. Um, and as Mr. Parman mentioned, he will be uh, a speaker at the 2013 Martial Arts Super Show uh, this July in Las Vegas. Uh, we're going to be at the Venetian again this year. It's a great venue. We had a great time there, great rooms, just, just a, a beautiful place. Um, the, for those of you who've never been to a martial arts super show or maybe have never even heard of this show, uh, this is the world's largest martial arts educational event. Uh, features products, business strategies, networking opportunities. There's everyone from uh, instructors who are looking to open their own school in attendance to celebrities, UFC fighters, uh, martial arts legends will all be there together in one place. Uh, this year we have 50 business seminars. That's more business seminars than we have ever had in a previous martial arts super show. We're going to have over 60 exhibitors uh, sharing their products and services to help you improve your school. Uh, we also have seven pre-conference events. Now these pre-conference events happen on the Saturday and Sunday uh, before the actual Super Show event. Um, so if you want to come in a little early, that would be great. Um, for those of you who have registered for the Super Show and are looking to attend um, one of these pre-conference events, we're offering every webinar attendee today 50% off on the seminar and the Instructor College. Now the Instructor College, uh, Mr. Dave Kovar will be uh, sharing tips for instructors to improve their classes, cut down on uh, repetition and our success seminar, uh, Mr. Frank Silverman, uh, Adam Parman, as well as the other Maya Elite consultants will be sharing strategies to improve your business. Again, you can get 50% off either one or both of these pre-conference events with the promo code webinar. And you can go to masupershow.com to register uh, for the show as well as those pre-conference events. Um, I see more questions have popped up on the GoToWebinar panel, so we'll go ahead and address a few of those now. Uh, so the first question we have um, is, how do you divide camps by age or belt, as in beginning, intermediate, and advanced? Uh, that's a great question. So um, in terms of uh, the martial arts um, classes that you teach with your camp, it's a perfect opportunity to use your uh, leadership or team member helpers um, to help divide that out. So um, while we're going to accept all levels of the, and experience into our camps, our existing students that are um, intermediate or advanced levels, we're going to separate them out and we're going to do that as part of our curriculum. From my experience, um, camps always run uh, much more smoothly and have much more issues the smaller uh, the groups that we divide it out. So um, we like to break um, students up um, in small groups, um, both when teaching the classes and when doing any of our activities. Um, so we'll break it up both by age and skill level. Typically, um, if I'm going to have uh, 5 to 12 years old, I'm going to break up our 5 and 6 year olds and place them together, um, and then I'm going to break up my uh, seven to eight year olds, and then all my nine to twelve year olds. So those are going to be my age brackets, and then I'll look at different skill levels within those age brackets uh, if I need to divide those those groups up even more. Now the majority of our uh, summer camp material in terms of uh, our martial arts training is going to be theme based activities. Uh, so as you saw from uh, our example uh, daily schedule, we're going to be doing things like um, throwing ninja stars or sword training uh, with wooden bokens or uh, foam covered bokens. So um, with that, that's not necessarily um, 
uh, all age and skill levels are all going to be learning uh, the same thing at the same time. We'll just break them up in smaller groups. Uh, now for our evening curriculum, that's when I'm going to have my leadership or uh, my other instructors working with individual groups based by, on age and skill level. And they'll be teaching the individual evening curriculum uh, that pertains to each of those separate belt levels. Great. Uh, Mr. Perlman, our next question is, how do I convert campers into new members? Oh, fantastic question. Well, one of the things that we do um, that's unique to a lot of summer camp programs is that on day one, we start off, and one of our crafting activities is going to uh, is for the children to make an invitation for their parents to come to um, to a final um, martial arts show, quote unquote. <laughs> and we typically do that martial arts show uh, between um, uh, sometime between three thirty to 4.30 on the last day of the camp. So that's going to be um, hosted on Friday. So on Monday, they'll take some invitations for their moms and dads, inviting them to come to the show. And then all week long, as we work on their uh, curriculum and uh, as we work on our camp themes, there's going to be um, certain activities and things that they're going to be do that we're going to be doing and practicing in class for them to do in front of their moms and dads much like you would uh, do a graduation ceremony. And then on that final day, for the parents that can make it, then they'll come a little bit early to pick up their son or daughter, and, uh, and then they get to watch the show. And we put on about a 30-minute presentation for all the parents. We showcase some of the things that they've been learning uh, during the week and some of the martial arts training. And then for any of our non-students um, that are campers that attended that week, then they get to come up and they get to break a board and they get to earn their white belt at the very end of the graduation ceremony. And then we just make an announcement to any of the parents um, of the uh, non-students and we let them know that, um, that we would like to invite them to come and try our evening program out. We give them a copy of our class schedule. We highlight the appropriate class times for that child's age and skill level. And then we let those parents know that whatever they paid for that, that particular session, that we'll apply that towards regi registration and first month tuition to go into our evening program. So for instance, if they paid $135 for that, for that week, then we'll apply that $135 to our $150 registration fee and our first month tuition of $125. So they would just simply pay the difference. We would provide a martial arts uniform for them, and they could immediately start. Or if they were going to be gone or on vacation throughout the summer or they had pins, then they would go ahead and pay for that, get their uniform, and then uh, their membership agreement would begin um, at the end of the summer or when they were uh, first available to start the evening classes. Great, great. And our next question um, is, what is the basic half-day camp price if you want to just kind of speak to generalized pricing? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, every area is going to be a little bit different depending on the part of the country that you live in. But um, it, typically, it should be uh, somewhere between 70 to 75 percent of your full uh, camp price. So for instance, if you're charging um, 145 for your weekly rate, then um, then that should be somewhere around 100 to uh, to 110 dollars uh, for your half day rate. Excellent. We have a, a few people that are asking um, if you can just go ahead and repeat your email address again. Most definitely. So my email is aparman at masuccess.com. So that's spelled A-P-A-R-M-A-N, aparman at masuccess.com. And, and uh, we, still, we still have a number of, of great questions coming in. And, and guys, if you haven't uh, had an opportunity to ask your question, uh, please feel free to put that into the box. Um, 
How would you reward the instructors for helping with the camp, Mr. Farman? Um, uh, that's an awesome question. Well, um, uh, it depends on their role. Um, obviously, if that instructor is a part-time employee, then they're just going to get uh, their hourly rate um, uh, in terms of organization. <laughs> if they're a full-time employee or hired for summer camp um, at a um, at a salary rate, then we're going to do a bonus um, based on attendance. So, um, uh, for instance, every summer. Uh, for um, uh, my larger schools, then I'm going to hire a um, summer camp director, and that person's responsibility is going to be to help organize uh, the camp and watch over the camp. And of course, a lot of times they have also have a role in in camp opening up for the day, closing for the day, those type of things as well. Uh, but they're also going to be responsible for some of the marketing leading up to summer camp. So. Um, uh, so we're going to set goals for our school of at least 20 or 25 uh, children per camp, and then anything over that um, that point, then they're going to get an additional uh, bonus um, that week of the camp. So for instance, if we set our goal for 20 and we have 30 campers, then they're going to get bonus off of those 10, and that bonus is going to be somewhere between um, somewhere between 20 to 30 dollars per per. A, uh, per child. They only get that bonus after uh, the following week uh, or uh, the following pay session after, uh, after that camp is complete. Excellent. And I see a number of uh, questions of people um, asking if we will be making a recording of this webinar available. Uh, yes, we will. It will be available at masuccess.com in the webinar section, and we will also send a direct link to all attendees uh, within 24 hours of today's event. Um, next question we have, um, have you adapted your summer camp or created a new approach to applying camps to the balance calendar many school systems are moving towards? And that's the six-week summer, three weeks off in the fall. Absolutely. And in fact, um, uh, two of the counties in which um, we um, service um, have a, a quote unquote balanced calendar as well. So uh, most definitely, and because our our summer camp is broken up in weeks or in in session weeks, then it's easy to apply those uh, each week. So if you have three weeks in the summer and then uh, you move um, a few months later to have uh, two additional weeks, then you can easily apply um, each of these different sessions accordingly. Okay, great. Um, I think go ahead, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our question and answer section. Um, again, if you have any other questions that come up, um, maybe as you're reviewing this video in the future or thinking about it, um, you can definitely send an email to Mr. Parman, uh, A-Parman, A-P-A-R-M-A-N, at masuccess.com. Uh, you can also feel free to post your questions on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash MA success. Uh, again, Mr. Parman, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today and joining us for this webinar. Uh, everyone, we hope to see you at the 2013 Martial Arts Super Show. Uh, it's less than two months away. And again, you can register at masupershow.com. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.